actors. Well, uh, then... We're going to need some actors to say the lines. Uh, oh, Sylvia's here. We, 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 we've got Sylvia. Oh, good. I, I think Dennis is in his dressing room. Is he sober? Darling, can you get me a coffee, please? Yes. Uh, white with two sugars? Black with three. I think... I think it's all right, yes. I'm going to run the opening credits while we're waiting. Have we got the music? Yes, yeah, got the music, yes. Yeah. Right. Alexandra Road, episode 3009. Never for a moment, no. Hello. Oh, thank you, Ruthie. No, never for a single moment did any of us who work on that first episode ever dream that there'd be a 3,000 or even a 30th. How many did they mean to do? Mm. Six. <laughs> but it was so popular they couldn't take it off. But we can't say that now. Oh, no, no. We're, we're not doing that badly. <laughs> what were we in last week's ratings? 37. Oh. oh, yeah. Well, the ratings aren't everything. 37th. We used to worry if we slipped to third. Yeah, I was trying to work out coming in this morning. Work out how many story conferences like this one I must have attended. Hundreds? Oh, about 500. And they don't get any flaming easier. Morning. Oh, morning, morning Harry. Bernie. Oh. Morning. Oh, full house today, then, as it should be. Coffee. Must have a coffee. <clears throat> and I thought it was late. Uh, we were just saying. Yes, day to day. Yeah. So why do we have a story conference when we got this dinner thing tonight? Oh, so must go on. And on and oh, on. We'll all be knackered, won't we? Anyone mind if I open the window? No. Oh, stupid. Well, I thought they might have postponed that. Oh, well, no, no, that's the great thing, you see. 3,000 transmission tonight, 3,000 and whatever being recorded downstairs, and here are we, plus in 3,015 to 3,021. Oh, Ronnie, don't remind us. I'm going for a pee. I don't know why we have a starting time. So one time we never play me start. Yes, where is our eminent producer? Come down to the studio, congratulate the artist on the show's birthday. So long as he's back to sign my expenses. Oh, yeah, I haven't done mine. Hey, how long have you been writing for this show then, Ruthie? Oh, Seventeen long years. Got scars to prove it. <laughs> and what about you, Mel? Oh, just three. <laughs> Get out while you can, mate. <laughs> ben? God knows. And Larry, huh, I suppose. Mm, Fifteen, sixteen. Yes. Has anybody got a pen? No. Sorry. Not, um... Must be some kind of long service record. I We're mean, a load of old hacks, my love. That's all we are. Oh, no. Not even raise a pen for me to do my expenses. We work for the greatest show that television has ever seen. Thought we worked for Alexandra Road. <laughs> a favourite of the royal family. What? I quote the Daily Express. Oh. That Princess yeah. Margaret never misses an episode if she can help it. Oh, no. can't any of us help it. <laughs> My favourite producer. Liar. And how are you this morning? I'm worrying about my speech for tonight. Michael, a man of your talent. You don't have to worry. No? No one will be listening to a word. Huh. Uh, yes, love. God, he's a pain. <laughs> well, anyhow, let it go. <laughs> yes. Ah! My darling. Sylvie. Mm. Mm. Happy 3,000s, darling. <laughs> and to you, love. Come, <laughs> Sylvie. Coming, Jeremy. My, Mike, I must see you. Uh, uh, well, um, I know it's a bad day, and you must be up to your ears in it, but, but how about lunchtime? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, in my uh, office. You're lovely. What? Oh, hello, Sam. I'm lovely. <laughs> anyway, excuse me, I've got to do myself. <laughs> about time. Well, not often we have Mr. Head of Series and Serials come down to see us this time of a Wednesday morning. No, well... Come to tell us we've all got a rise to celebrate the 3,000. No. Uh, ready? No, no, I bet you haven't. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. Oh, are you coming? Uh, no, no. This, this is the scene where uh, this morning, the club not open, Ada's bagging some loose change, and you come in, Father O'Flynn. Uh, to be sure I do not. Right, OK. Uh, quiet, please. This is, this is a rehearsal. Yes, nope. And cue Ada. Oh, it's you, Father. Well, I must say, I was under that impression myself, yes. I was expecting a man for the empties. Oh, dear, I must be something of a disappointment. You'll never be that, Father. Oh, it's not often we see you in here. Well, I'm not a drinking man, you know that. One of the few. Yeah. Actually, Michael, oh, yeah, yeah, I was hoping to have a word. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. I mean, I know today's going to be a hell of a day, oh, so I thought I'd get in early. Uh, yeah. Uh, Should we go out uh, now? Uh, yeah. 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 Any excuse to get away from this you rubbish? never find out. I'll tell you one thing, though. It'd have a lot less to gossip about. Uh, who's been sounding off now, then? Well, I can't remember who it was exactly, but... Uh... You mean you'd rather not. Ah, uh, yes, perhaps I do, but, 
The word was that you were still keeping company with Alice Smith. Hmm. And I thought she'd come in here to lumber me with a load of raffle tickets, Father. You're joking. No, we want to bring the show off. Bury it. Alexandra Road? Yep. No. Sam, no. Sorry. We're a national institution. Well, admit it. It'd be like knocking down the White Cliffs of Dover. Have you seen this week's ratings? We're not exactly at the top anymore. Last week's ratings? The ratings for the past year? We'll come back. We'll climb back You up. won't. I am sorry, Mike, but you will not. When do we come off? Three months. Oh. Look, Mike, how often have you complained to me about the difficulties of finding new stories? A cast that's too old. We're bringing in new people. Oh, yeah? Amanda. Amanda Schofield. Yeah, all right. So you've got one punk squat. It's a start. I'm sorry, Oh, Mike. come on. Look, Amanda Schofield's very good, but she's not going to change anything, and you know it. And today? Today of all days? Well... That is a bit unfortunate. I have to stand up there tonight and make a speech about what a wonderful show this is, knowing all the time that it's coming off. You can do it. Huh. And I don't want this leaked, right? This is our secret. I don't want the press to get hold of it. Sam, you're... You're an old friend. I mean, we've worked together for this company for... Well, for I don't know how long. Seven weeks. I came here from Thames seven weeks ago. Well, it seems longer. I mean, you said three months. We come off in three months. Yeah. Suppose. Suppose in those three months we got back to the top of the ratings. <laughs> Impossible. If, if we did. Then we'd think again. But personally, I think the age of miracles is well past. So I have to pretend. As far as all the cast are concerned and the writers, I have to pretend. Business as usual, yeah. Hmm. The show must go on for three months, and then it's got to come off. Could Ethel get pregnant? No. Mm. She must be over 50. She doesn't look it, though. We could say she was 40. No one would I'm not having a baby on this show. She could get an abortion. Uh, she's not going to get an abortion. No, this is a family show. So why can't we have a baby on this? Because she's not going to get pregnant, she's not going to have abortions, babies, or anything. Forget it. <laughs> Sorry. Just an idea. <sighs> Don't apologise. Ideas are what we need. Got a fag, Bernie. Help yourself. Cheers. They're a difficult couple, aren't they, the Snagsby's, Harold and Ethel? I mean, ever since we got them married, we really haven't known them. Kill him. <coughs> Time we had a date. Oh, Ruth. I'm serious. Car crash. I haven't got a car. They hire one. He can't drive. That's why they have a crash. <laughs> 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 he's decapitated and his wife's... They're Ooh. both decapitated. <laughs> Two heads are better than one. <laughs> no, there must be something. <laughs> Suppose... No, no. Suppose he sent his suit to the cleaners. Oh, does he have a suit? How? <laughs> All right, he buys one. So why does he need to send it to the cleaners if it's new? He's got blood stains on it from when he was decapitated. Yeah, yeah. He really? already has a suit. Even Harold Snagsby has a suit. Now, go on now. Well, he sends his suit to the cleaners. If Ethel had a baby, then it could have puked her. Ruthie! Him. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, suppose he left some money in one of the pockets, and suppose, that by mistake, the suit got sent back to somebody else. Yeah. Ellis Smith said. Anyway, something so that there's a conflict over whose money it is. <laughs> whose suit it is. And whose head it is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Mm. Uh, Is there any coffee left? Yeah, should be, huh? Oh, all right, all right, forget about the Snagsby's. Mm. Again? We'll just see them in the club, call a shop or whatever. <coughs> uh, what about this Ada Tansy Ellis Smith relationship? Yes, we've got to do something with that. Uh, wasn't the idea, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't the idea that we were going to involve Father O'Flynn? Yeah, yeah. Though whose idea it was to involve a, a priest in an affair between a club stewardess and a bookie... It was yours. Oh. <clears throat> Look, suppose Ada were to receive a poison pen letter from Father O'Flynn? Well, she doesn't know who it's from. But the police think it's from Father O'Flynn. Look, can I, can I just remind everybody that Father O'Flynn is a sympathetic, wise, much-loved and respected parish priest who does not send poison pen letters. No, Amen. but people... The people don't even think that he sends them. All right. 
It's the budget. No. Hey, that bird. Do you know, it twisted all through one of my scenes last Very good it was. And Larry decapitates the budget. <laughs> no, <laughs> <not> mine. <laughs> Look. Look, we've been sat here for two hours. We've got virtually nothing down on paper. Oh, we're always better. Look, Ruth, I'm serious. <laughs> We've got 18 regular characters on this show. Now, we've got to find stories, good stories, for at least half of them. And so far, I've heard nothing but a load of silly suggestions. So what? No. That, um, oh, all right. All right. I know the problem. I know we've gone through over 3,000 episodes. I know everybody's had affairs with everybody else. Everybody's been married to everybody else. And it's difficult to find new stories. But we've got to do it. I've got to be my meter. Oh, God. Shan't be long. I don't know why he bothers coming in. Somebody been getting at you, Michael? Never mind. Yeah, not his usual happy self, is it? Change of life. Stories, come on, I want some good stories. Uh, what about our little Amanda? Yes. Yeah, good, isn't she, like Yes, she is. And she's young, and she's fresh. She hasn't been married seven times, like all our other boring old characters. Oh, no, I might be fair. I'm being oh. fair. Well, suppose... Mel. I mean, she's still squatting in number seven, isn't she? Yeah. Suppose that Louis pays her another call. Our friend, the Jewish landlord. We've never said that he's Jewish. He's not Chinese, is he? He pays her another call, has another go at getting her out. We've played that scene so many times. Wait, look. and she says, will you let me stay if I paint the house, right? I didn't mm. think Punchland ever painted. Mm. They paint themselves. Oh, yeah. And he says, OK. Louis, he says, OK. He'd never say OK. He might. If he gives us a story, he might. So she paints the house, only, of course, not in the style that he wants. It's a punk house. It's a punk house. I like it. It's a story. Not much of a story, but... And a jar of that there beetroot. Always been partial to a bit of beetroot on his bomb cake, has Harold. Right. No, I could tell you a thing or two. <laughs> you know that my house faces onto that club. Is that all? Well, there are worse things to face onto. Oh, I mean, you're shopping. Is that all you want? Oh, yeah. Oh, but the times of the night I've seen that Ellis Smith leaving there, well, you wouldn't credit it. One pound seventy-four. Hmm. I used to be one of them that stuck up for Ada Tansy, but not anymore, I don't. Well, I'm sure that Ada would be very sorry to hear that. Losing your good opinion be like losing so much she never knew she had. Right, uh, ho hold it just a second. I, I think that was all right. <sighs> Another gem. Could you hear my tummy rumbling through that? <laughs> no. Yes, we'll buy that. OK, uh, lunch, everybody, oh. please. Yes. You're joking. Michael, I haven't slept a wink this last week worrying. Am I doing the right thing? I'm not surprised. Because you're not. You, Sylvia Spencer, leave Alexandra Road? Yes. Never. I'll do these studios now, and then that's it. But... Alexandra Road without Ada Tansy, it, it, it's unthinkable. Is it money? <sighs> now be straight with me, Sylvie, please. We've known one another a long time. Is it the money? No. No? It's the role. I'm sick to death of being Ada Tansy. Oh, it's a wonderful role. Ada Tansy and her budget. I'm dark. sick to death of not being able to walk down the street, get on a train, go shopping or anything without having women pointing and men pointing and shouting and giving me sprays of millet seed. Because they love oh, you. They don't love me. If they love anything, they love the character. They don't love me. You are the character. I'm not. I'm me. And I'm tired of playing second fiddle to a stupid, vulgar woman who dresses like a cheap tart. You can't do it. Why not? We have you under contract. So? So... So please don't do it, Sylvie. Please don't. I'm sorry, Michael. I have a letter of resignation here. I won't accept it. I won't even read it. Michael, I'm leaving the show. People have done it before. Not Ada Tansy. I am not Ada Tansy. All right, you, not you. Listen. Sylvie. What? Will it make any difference if I say that, starting today, I'm asking everybody to make a big effort to put this show, this lovely, wonderful show, right back where it belongs at the top of the ratings? No. 
Oh, thank you, sir. I'm sorry. And today... Why today? Why, along with the rest of the world, have you decided to crucify me on the day of the show's 3,000th transmission? It just seemed now or never. I mean, is this some kind of conspiracy? Pardon? No, never mind. You'll be at the dinner tonight. I don't know. Perhaps it'd be better if I wasn't. I know it'd be better if I wasn't. I just wish somebody would give me the choice. Mm. Then there's another fag to earn. He meant to buy some, but... Here. Have we not finished, Mike? Uh, yeah, I must say, I, I've seen us with a lot less on the paper than this. Uh, Have we not uh, done our duty, Michael? Seven minutes to six. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. I suppose it, it's just that... Mm. I, I, I can't say for sure yet, but mm. I'm afraid that some of these stories we might not be able to use. Really? Uh, why? I knew there was and, something. Unless, unless I can persuade somebody to change her mind. Which somebody? Change her mind about what? Well, it's, it's not somebody wanting to leave the show, surely. Maggie Fleming. Jean Johnson. If it's Daphne Pollard, then I'll start a collection for her now. No, 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 no. <laughs> but forget I said anything. I, I still think there's a good chance I can persuade the lady in question to change her mind, so, so just forget I said anything. Mm. Well, that's it then, Mike, is it? It is, Larry. Oh, yes. <laughs> Finished. Thanks. Own time. Great. Never mind tomorrow. Let's live for tonight. Yeah, Whining, dining, episode yeah. 3000. Yeah. Congratulations, speeches, champagne corks popping. It'd be just like the Titanic before it hit the iceberg. Ruthie! Hello, Mel. Fancy seeing you here. Oh, I like the boat. Right. Right. Does it light up? No, but I do. <laughs> oh, hello. Hello. It's uh, oh, Spectre Mailer, isn't it? Well, I was hoping I could keep up to play David tonight. Oh, David. <laughs> oh, well, th this is my wife, Barbara. Hello. hello. Pleased to meet you. Um, Mel, do you know Inspector David. No. Uh, no, I don't Mel's think another must... writer. Oh. And David's our police liaison officer. Oh, yes. Mm. Well, it's not a very demanding. Of course, I'm glad to see <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, we'll get on in. You know the way? Uh, well, we'll find it. Oh, I'm so much. Hey, and you. Um, see you later. Are you joining us? So, uh, they were just writers, were they? Yes. I do hope we'll get to meet some of them. Some of the stars. Well, they'll be here. Now, let's see if we can find where the shindig's supposed to be, then. Oh, what? Father of Flynn. I mean, the actor. Well, you know him better than I do. Yes, it is. He looks different without his cassock. Younger. Why is he swaying like that? I don't know. Now, Studio 6, we want. It sits down here. Look. These must be the dressing room. Yeah, it looks like it. I'm excited, aren't you? Well, yes, quite. Uh, well, you're used to it. Mind off it. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord. That's no, all right. Getting in everybody's way, aren't I? <laughs> Thank you. I'm saying it's all right for you. You're used to oh, it. Oh, come on. I bet I haven't been in here more than a dozen times in, well, however many years. Fifteen. That many? Oh, look, Studio Six at, at the end there. Uh. You were only detective constable then, the first time they asked you for advice. I can. Cedric at the corner shop had sold a can of tuna fish that had gone off. Molly Spinks had put it to her cat. Sounds like a full house. Cat had been bitten by Gerald's dog. The dog had died, and they wanted to know what the police view would be. <laughs> Well, I'll say this for them. They've done us proud. Oh, Shanfers, I mean. Oh, God bless you, Mel. Hey, do you remember, was it the one or the two thousand celebrations when they hired a ship? <laughs> no, you don't hire a ship. No, Charters. Charters. Yeah, one thousand. Ray, where did you go? The Isle of Man. <laughs> and we were all that blotted by the time we got there. <laughs> and Morris Jones fell off the oh, boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then the two thousand do, that was when they hired Black Blackwood. Yeah. Really? <laughs> Uh, champagne reception on the top. Pity about <laughs> Morris. Pity about Morris. I mean, falling off a boat was one thing. Oh, we do look at what. Oh, Larry. Hello, Larry, love. Uh, Champagne. Cheers, yeah. Uh, hey, have you seen the mob outside? Yeah. Took me ten minutes to fight my way through. A wonderful evening. Yeah, the only thing that worries me. Oh, what? Do we, do we get expenses? Oh, Michael, Michael, Michael. Yeah, well oiled already, then, huh? Wow. Uh, 
Uh, no, me and not a drinking man. No, just a, knowing the stinginess of beloved employers, a thought better come prepared. So you drank a bottle of Scott vodka. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, have, have you seen Sylvia anywhere around? Who is Sylvia? Where is she? No, stop a minute. Have you seen her? No. Damn. Does she owe you money? You're more serious than that. Well, if I see her, Michael, my friend, my producer, I shall inform her of your quest. Yeah, uh, only I don't think you will, because I somehow don't think that she'll be coming. Oh, yeah. he's here. Oh, he's here. Oh, Bernie. Evening, Bernie. Oh, I knew it. What, love? Put us all together. Oh. Right as table. <laughs> After we do nothing but sit around a table together all flaming day. Chambers. All oh, right, then go on and do nothing else. <laughs> but you know the producer, don't you? Oh, well, sort of. Well, then. Look, Lord, if you want to meet all those stars, just go up to them and say hello. Oh. I'm sure they're used to it. Hello, ladies In the red corner. Quiet thing. Thank you. <laughs> My lords, ladies and gentlemen, can I first welcome you here tonight to this grand celebratory dinner on the 3,000th anniversary of Britain's best-loved and longest-running television series, Alexandra Rose. <laughs> Get drunk. <laughs> we will, together with the nation at large, watch tonight's historical transmission of episode 3000. Oh, you will, I'm assured, all enjoy it enormously. Oh, yes. yeah. 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 You will. Dinner will be served. Wow. And will be followed by a few then. well chosen words from a few well chosen people. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, if I could ask for silence and direct your attention to the loud screams on the walls of the studio. Thank you. Economy. Well, yes. I think we've earned the right, haven't we? I'm sure you have. One thing. Number watching in here tonight. Must put the viewing figures up. <laughs> well, here we go then. Did I hear there's a young lady in residence? Don't know about that. Looks more like an Apache in you, where she dresses. Oh, Mr. Sulfate, sir. There you are. Sorry to disturb you, but there's, uh, there's something very serious happened. What? Well, uh, could you come outside a minute, please? Yeah, OK. It's not there. It's got it in for me. Yeah, that rotten, stinking yes. landlord. I'll have a word with him, shall I? See what I can do. Do you know what she wants water for? I'm sure she never has a wash. You're joking. I wish I were. You have found... Well, well one of the cleaners. One of the cleaners found Sylvia Spencer... Yes. ...in her dressing room. Yes. Dead. Dead, sir, yes. Oh, my God. Shot. Well, it looks like it. I mean, we haven't touched the body, eh? I've left one of our security people outside the door, and, and I've come to tell you. Oh, Sylvia. Hey, funny thing is... Well, it's not funny. I mean, I don't mean... What? Mean, well, she, she's still all made up. You know, as Ada Tansy... Still wearing your costume and makeup and everything. Yeah, and you're sure that she's dead? Oh, well, positive. Is the, uh, is the gun there? Well, I couldn't see one. No? No. It, it doesn't look like suicide. Not to me, anyway. Look, look, uh, can you go back in there and ask Sam Richardson, you know, the head of series? Yeah, I know him, sir. Yes, 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 sir. Ask him to come out here. And, and someone in, in there, there's a, there's a policeman, yeah. a detective right. inspector, something or other. Right. I can't remember his name. 
And they each have their own dressing room. Uh, yeah. So this one's always Sylvia Spencer. <laughs> yes. Uh, mm. Ah, uh, Sam, uh, do you know Detective Inspector... Uh, uh, Naylor. Naylor. Well, let's take a look then, shall we? The door's not locked. This is just how we found her. Oh, God. Oh, God. A bit of a mess. Oh, God, I'm going to be sick. I'm going to be sick. Well, she's dead, all right. <laughs> and by the looks of it, not by her own hand. Are you sure? Well, you wouldn't generally shoot yourself in the back of the head, would you? Make a mess like that. Uh, no. Murder, then. Uh, can we... Can we go outside? Yes. Yes. See that that stays closed for the time being. Yes, sir. Are you all right, Sam? Uh, yes. Yes. Well, I'd better get to the telephone. Uh, right. Yeah, look, what about the do? The, the, the dinner? Look, no, no, tell him to go home. Right? Well, uh, I mean, it's your decision, not mine, but we certainly won't want everybody going home. What do you mean, carry on, say nothing? Oh, you're, you're I think I would, if I were you. Yes, perhaps we should. It's what Sylvia would want, after all. You, you mean I've got to make my speech? Yeah, you can do it, Mike. Old trooper like you. Well, uh, Ada, see you tomorrow, <laughs> then. <laughs> I'd better let you out the side door. In case Ethel Smaxby's got a periscope on. Oh, <laughs> not worried at all, are you? I mean, about folk you? talking. Oh, you know what they say, Alice Love. <clears throat> Sticks and stones can break my bones, but calling will not hurt me. And we haven't started <clears throat> chucking <throat> sticks and stones yet, have we? Not as yet, no. So we have now to worry about, huh? <laughs> Congratulations, Arnie. Oh, thank you. Very nice, Arnie. Well, I tried to write an ordinary episode. Nothing special. Oh, uh, I think you managed that. Yeah. Oh, I found it. Then. Much to the delight of a young lady I was about to take out. <laughs> she said, well, I knew you were a policeman, but I didn't know you'd take it that seriously. Well, you don't, do you? No. <laughs> Where'd we find you, then? You look as though you were out somewhere posh. I was here. Here? At the dinner. On the spot, when it happened. <laughs> well, I've sort of advised him on uh, police procedure from time to time. Oh, so very that... nice. I must admit, I don't think I've ever watched a single episode. No, my wife. My wife is an addict. <sighs> anyway. Yeah. The photography's been. The pathologist is in there now. Yeah, fingerprints are on the way. Good. I passed Henry in the station, actually, getting his gear together. But you know what he's like. Uh, all fingers and thumbs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not much doubt that it's murder, is there? No. It's murder, all right. Apparently... They finished recording at six. Yeah. Sylvia Spencer had been in the studio playing this, this um, Ada Tansy character that she does. Mm -hmm. Well, she came back into the dressing room and sat down. Yeah. And somebody came in and blew the back of red off. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, play silence for the producer of Alexandra Road, Mr. Michael Spilsbury. Oh. Oh. Lord Mayor... Honoured guests, ladies and gentlemen, members of the cast. Hands up, everybody who's seen all 3,000 episodes. <laughs> I don't believe you. No, I haven't. Then I'm not old enough. Actually, I know. I've got Edith, our historian. Now, she is old enough. Just a joke, Edith, love, just a joke. I asked her to work out just how many actors and actresses we've had in the show over the years. Mr. Arnold Thorne? Yes? Well, do come and sit down, Mr. Thorne. Now, I'm Detective Inspector Naylor, and this is Detective Sergeant Labour. Uh, and for the moment, at least, we're in charge of the investigations regarding the death of Sylvia Spencer. Uh, yes. Now, you're a writer on the programme. Yes. And I believe that you saw, well, you, you spoke to Sylvia Spencer earlier this evening. Yes. See, what we have to do, Mr Thorne, is to try and establish a precise time of death. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, yes, I, I used to write for Dixon Drop Green and, on one occasion, Zed Cars. Zed Cars? Well, uh, well, only the, the ones. It wasn't really my style, but it means I'm familiar with police procedure. I see, yes, yes. So, do you know what time exactly? Well, we had a story conference today that finished at six o'clock. And then uh, I came down to the dressing room to see Sylvia. She'd just come off the set from playing Ada Tansy. You've seen the show? Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> A character to rank alongside any from Shakespeare to Dickens, in her own way. And she was all right when you saw her, hmm? Yes. Yes, 
I just chatted for a few minutes and then left. Why did you go down to see him, Mr Thorne? Sergeant. Yeah? There are very few people left in this company who worked on episode one of Alexander Road. Silver and I are two of those people. <laughs> then, then another famous episode there was the Alexander Road Fire oh. <laughs> and very dramatic especially when it got out of control burnt down the entire outdoor set three cameras, a catering caravan and a nearby office <laughs> and, and, and the great names of that time Gene Huddleston. Oh, now you're talking. <laughs> Eric Slack, the road umbrella repairer. <laughs> and Sandy Murgatroyd. Oh, no. In the wheelchair. He, he used to have all his lines written on his cuffs. <laughs> and one day he forgot, rolled his sleeves up and was struck dumb. <laughs> this is Edith Carlyle. Miss. Miss, I'm sorry. And you are the, uh, well, what shall we say? The historian. The historian. The programme's historian. Yes. Right. Well, Miss Carlyle, the help we want from you, not necessarily tonight, is if you could give us a sort of guided tour of Alexander Road and all the characters in it. Yes, certainly. It's very helpful, particularly, of course, Ada Tunsey, the uh, Sylvia Spencer character. Well, Ada Tunsey is one of only two characters who've been with the show since its inception, the other being Father of Flynn, the Catholic priest. She was aged 32 when, in episode one, viewers saw her apply for the post of barmaid at the club, a post which she was to hold until 1967, episode 1403, when she became steward. Yes, well... Uh, Always a colourful character, with a fondness for budgery cars, she's been one of the show's favourites. I think that perhaps... If her could... first major story involved a salesman in dairy produce who begged her to go away with him. Then, on the very night of their play, planned elopement, a woman entered the club, ordered a milk stout, and revealed herself to be the salesman's wife. Ada, extremely distressed, disappeared, and there were fears for her life. Now, please, Miss Carlyle, if we could perhaps leave all that till later. Oh, yes, of course. What happened? After Ada had disappeared. Yeah. Oh, she was found by Father O'Flynn, sitting alone in the church. His wise counsel showed her that she was not to blame and she was back behind the bar for opening time the following day. Ah. Oh. All right? Oh, yeah. Uh, just wondered. Mm. Then, then we came to the 70s. Now, actually, there was a period at the beginning of the 70s when there was talk of the show coming off. Never. Because it was showing its age. But that epitaph, like so many others, proved premature. New blood came into the show. New actors, new writers. Though, as always, it was new blood carefully blended with the old. And we survived the rumour mongers. Hey! Oh, no. One story I'll never forget about that time yeah. the Alexandra Road three legged race. Oh, not that In one. which two actors broke a leg each. <laughs> <laughs> I worship her. Everybody, they worship her. Yes, yes I, I realise this must be very distressing. For My sister, she was a star. Sophia Loren, Elizabeth Taylor, they, they couldn't hold a candle to my Sylvie. No, no, that's right. And they do, what do they do? Two films a year. My Sylvie, she does two a week. For 27 years, she does two a week. That's how many? Well, a lot. Now, M Mr. Vermici, of some things I, I have to ask you. Yes, of course. How long were you married? Eleven years. Eleven years. And, and always happy. For eleven years, we were happy. We met... I remember it. It was a summer's evening. In La Grande Placia di Venice. Oh, yeah. You know the restaurant? No. It's down the East Langs Road. Can you tell us anything about her state of mind? I, I, I mean, today, recently, was there anything worrying her? Nothing. No? For 11 years, nothing worries her. No? For 11 years, every minute, every second, she was happy. Yeah? Except, of course, for the threats. Pardon? The threats. What threats? The threats in the anonymous letters. Come again. This is, uh, this 
is something we haven't heard about. Defects? Yes. Oh, one each month for three months, all saying the same thing, that she must leave the show or, or else. Leave the show? Or else. Or else what? Or else she will end up like the dead Bajriga. What dead Bajriga? With each letter there is a dead Bajriga. I told her somebody is sick. Somebody is jealous that she is such a star. Uh, maybe Elizabeth Taylor, maybe she sends them. You still got these letters? No. Uh -huh. No, I, always I, I burned them. It's a pity. But I have the budgery cars. Oh? I buried them in the garden. Unless the cat has got them, they should still be there. So, so ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure and privilege tonight to ask you all to join me in a toast. So, if you charge your glasses, oh, and that's if there's any booze left, if yeah. Dennis Moon hasn't had it all. Oh, 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 oh. Ladies and gentlemen, to Alexandra Road. God bless it, and all who live on it. Yeah, yeah. Which makes sense of why Sylvie came to see me this lunchtime and said that she wanted to leave the show. Yes. It wasn't because of what she said. It wasn't because she was fed up with the part or with the publicity. No. It was because of the anonymous letters. Well, it, it looks very much like it. She must have been terrified. Yeah. It's a pity she was such a good actress. So she pretended that she was tired of being Ada Tansy because she didn't want to admit that it was the anonymous letters that were frightening her out of the show. Mm. Oh. Sorry. Uh, it's been a hell of a day. One, one. One what? A bottle with some champagne left in it. Oh, I'm surprised. Anybody want some? Go on, then. Oh, why not? It's a pity that those anonymous letters were burnt. But at least we know the dead budgies were here. Now the constable go around and dig them up. Mm, rather human than me. Cheers. 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 The pathologist's initial impression is that it's definitely murder. Budgies? Oh, sorry. Sylvia Spencer. Yeah. What's, what's unusual about this case? I mean, in, in a way, there were two women killed tonight, weren't there? Mm. Sylvia Spencer and Ada Tansy. Now, which was it that our murderer thought he was killing? Hmm? Ada Tansy? You think so? Well, A, she was dressed as Ada Tansy. Makeup, wig, everything, yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. B, the dead budgies. They were a trademark, weren't they? Well, I mean, live ones were. So, so you're presuming that whoever sent the letters also did the shooting? A well, bit of a coincidence, otherwise. So, it's not so much who shot Sylvia Spencer as who shot Ada Tansy. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <sighs> anyway, look. I'd better get home before I fall asleep. Well, what's your routine for tomorrow? Oh, don't ask, please. Well, it's just that... Uh... No, no, it's a studio day again. Recording. The show must go on. God knows why, but... And I suppose... I don't know, but I suppose that we're going to have an emergency story conference to sort out how Alexandra Road carries on without Ada Tansley. Morning, Ethel. Going to be a lovely day today, and you know how I know that. You listen to it weather forecast. I looked out of my window, and I could see Ramsbottom cooling towers as clear as I can see oh, you now. Me. And that always means a lovely day. A pound of your lean bacon, thin sliced. Right. Oh, good morning, family. And a lovely morning it is too, is it not? Eh? Hey? <laughs> Think you should get some sun for them roses of yours today. Uh, uh, no, wait. Uh, sorry to stop you, only I, I, don't, I don't see in, in the script that it says anything about Ethel being in tears. Have I, have I missed something? Oh, my God. <laughs> She's not at you, the stupid bird. <laughs> sorry. Look, we all know how you feel, though. I don't know. It doesn't seem right with that silly. Listen, know. Aubrey's coming down from the gallery. He, he wants a word himself. Oh, I'm <laughs> sure that I would also be in tears, dear. Except that the alcohol still flows in my bloodstream from last night, numbing all feeling. <laughs> Thing like that. I mean, she was such a lovely person. Mm, she oh. was. Now then, darling. <coughs> oh, Audrey. I'm sorry. 
Don't be. You're crying for us all, love. You're crying for us all. I mean, what can we do? I mean, you know that Sylvie would have wanted us to go on. Yeah, she won't, she won't. Yeah, I know it's hard. I feel it as much as anybody, but... The soul must go on. Absolutely. We're all broken-hearted <laughs> clowns today, my love. I'll try. Good girl, good girl. Oh, and Dennis, when you come into the shop, can you find a position just left of where you were? <laughs> We were losing you behind a pyramid of biscuit packets. I know. I was trying to hide. Uh, and, uh, Ethel, dear. Yes? When you talk about the cooling towers, mm. see if we can't get a bit more, more more passion into it. Mm. I mean, for Ethel. I mean, she gets out of bed in the morning, she looks out of her window, and, and, and there they are. Yes. Symbols of hope. Uh, yes. Yeah, as much as anything. Right, OK, we'll go for take this time, then. Well, we could say she'd eloped with Alice Smith, but that'd mean losing him as well. Uh, I'd rather not. Mm. I mean, the viewers all know she's dead, don't they? That the actress is dead. Oh, mm. Since it's all over this morning's papers. So they know she won't be coming back. So let's be short and simple about it. I'm a knocked down by a bus. Well, yeah. Nani, what do you think? <sighs> I don't know. I, I suppose Ruth's right enough. Let's go for a quick clean death. A road traffic accident. Or a train. Yeah, or something more dramatic about trains. I'm uh, going for a pee. Oh, we don't want to see the funeral, though, do we? No. Uh, Look, so suppose we have her killed abroad. Uh, or in the Isle of Man. Do they have trains on the Isle of Man? Mm. Hey, didn't, didn't she drop out of the show once before? Who? Oh. Sylvie. Uh, no. I mean, I mean, whatever excuse they used then, couldn't we use the same one again? Back in a tick. Mm. Did she? Did she drop out once before? First I've heard of it. Oh, and me. Garney? Uh, yes... Yeah, she did, yes. Oh, well, it must have been early days, then. It was. It'd be, um, what, um, 21 years ago now. She left the show for six months, then came back. Never knew that. No. So, so how did you explain her disappearing then? Oh, uh, well, you see, well, she wasn't the star then that she is now. Or rather, that she was. I think we said that she'd received a telegram from her brother who was lying in a coma on the Isle of Skye. A six-month coma? Yes. Uh, yes. Then we said that he'd recovered and had decided to continue living alone in his crofter's cottage. And Sylvia came back. Well, we can't use that again. Yes, so, what do we do? Um, oh, sorry, Mike. Um, would you excuse me for five minutes? Yes, uh, sure. Thank you. You all right, love? Yes, yes. It's taken me hard, hasn't he? Oh, it's have aged five years since yesterday. Well, they knew one another a long time. Anyway, yeah. suppose, Jamel. suppose we open the episode in Father O'Flynn's bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> That's a set we don't get much use for. True. <laughs> it's early morning, telephone rings, and he answers it. And it's the police to say that Ada Tansy's been found dead on the level crossing of a railway line. An unmanned level crossing. Yeah. Well, she's obviously been knocked down. Mm-hmm. But the mystery is, because of engineering works, there have been no trains on that line for two days. So what's happened then? She's been knocked down by a bus coming the other way over the level crossing. I mean, if we work on the premise that it was Sylvia Spencer, the actress, who was murdered... Yeah. Well, well, where does that get us? Nowhere. Mm, Thank you. Well... I mean, (laughs) it'd mean looking for somebody who would want to murder a woman who's 56, well-off, famous, and married to an Italian chiropodist. Like I said gets us nowhere. Whereas if we work on the premise that it was Ada Tansy, the character who was murdered, Mm. we're then looking for somebody who'd want to murder a stewardess of a club, unmarried, fond of budgerigars, and currently also fond of Ellis Smith, bookie. Mm. Still gets us nowhere. Mm. We need a break. (laughs) We need somebody to knock on that door and tell us he's found a gun. How did you do that? No idea. All right. I hope I'm not disturbing anything. Oh, Mr Thorne. Yes. No, no you're not disturbing anything at all. Come in. Morning, sir. <coughs> uh, morning, Sergeant. I do sit down. Yes, thank you. I, uh, I see the press about a field day. Well, only to be expected. There are few people in this country of ours loved by millions in the way that Sylvia was. Well? Uh, no, no, uh, I was reminded of something this morning. Um, something I thought you should know. Ah. 
I, I don't know that it's relevant, mind you. Anything can be relevant, sir. I'm sure your Dixon of Doc Green training taught you that. Oh, indeed, yes. So what? What? Well, what do you think? it's something that happened 21 years ago. Something that very few people ever knew about, and those few of us who did took an oath never to tell. Uh, packets of my cigars, if you would. Right. Pound and temperance. And uh, how's business with you then, Father? Nothing very new or surprising. Oh, well, let's hope it's the same with the three o'clock at Doncaster. Good <laughs> up. Bye now. <laughs> well, Father, it's him serving Mammon and you serving God. And me serving both of you. Uh, Yes, right, that's fine. Thank you, everybody. Ignorant shopkeeper, papist. Uh, D- Dennis, message from upstairs. The police would like a word. Oh, with me? The constabulary? Well, uh, apparently. Huh. Time to put him away. Do you think it'll help if I keep my clerical collar on? <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you brief for you. We'd like you to confirm, if you can, something we've only recently discovered about Sylvia Spencer. I'll uh, be glad to be of any assistance. Apparently... Twenty-one years ago, she left the programme for several months. You remember that? Yes, I uh, seem to have a vague recollection. We believe that she left to have a baby. And we also believe that she was the father of that baby. Well, you have done your homework. True, then, is it? It has the dreadful ring of truth about it, I must admit, yes. Ah. Do you mind if I have a little nip? Fun. From my flask? Oh, no, no. I carry it for moments such as this, paternity suits, parking tickets and the like. So you and Sylvia were lovers? Briefly. Long enough to produce a very embarrassing situation. I mean, it wasn't just one of your leading ladies being put in the club, as if that wasn't bad enough, it had to be Father O'Flynn that had put her in it. I mean, it's not the kind of thing that the good father should be getting up to in his spare time now, is it? Which is why it had to be kept a secret. Yes. They packed the poor girl off to somewhere in the Lake District. It was out of season, and she was able to give birth without attracting a crowd. The little bambino was adopted by good, honest folk who were paid for keeping their mouths shut, and hey, presto, all was right in our little world again. You can't see any possible connection between all that, all that happened 21 years ago, and Sylvia Spencer's murder? None. Oh, unless you think it gives me a motive. Father Flynn, womanizer and murderer. Be saying I drink next. Hmm. Well, uh, well, we'll leave it at that for now, then. Uh, look, Inspector, can I ask you one favour, if I'm not too late already? What? Just that you don't tell Amanda who her real mummy and daddy were. I mean, unless it's strictly necessary. Amanda? Amanda Schofield? Yes. Who plays Denise Platt? You mean that she's, uh... You didn't know? No. No. Ah. Well. See what a helpful citizen I am. Have I got this right? The child that you and Sylvia Spencer had is actually Amanda Schofield. They say it's stranger than fiction, don't they? Or to put it another way, Denise Platt, the Rhodes punk squatter, is actually the real-life daughter of Father O'Flynn and Ada Tanzi. The other side of the coin, yes. But she doesn't know it. Not unless you choose to enlighten her. Well, well now. Not unless we have to. Thank you. I can... Yes, um... yes, you can go now. Well, turn up for the book. Look, I'll go and see... Uh, what's his name? The producer. Spilsbury. Spilsbury. And you go and see that historian woman. Mm. Get her to tell you all about Father O'Flynn and Denise Platt. Right. Father O'Flynn comes from a large family in Cork, though we've only actually seen one of his relatives in the show. That was his brother, Captain O'Flynn, a New York policeman. He came over on holiday and apprehended a church vandal, shooting him in the, um, in the vestry, I think it was. Oh, yeah. I should explain, though, that the idea behind the Father of Flynn character wasn't just that he should be a focus of moral and religious issues in the show, but that we should also see him as a single man living alone, having to, you know, wash his own cassocks, that sort of thing. You're joking. No. No, it was one of your writers, Arnold Thorne, who first told us. 
Then Dennis Moon confirmed it, and unwittingly told us something that even Arnold Thorne didn't know, that this child that they had is now in the show itself. Amanda? Amanda Scrovey. <laughs> and people say that the stories we tell on the show are far-fetched. I'm not going to tell her, unless I have to, but I think I'd better have a word with it all the same. Uh, well, uh, she won't be in today, and then tomorrow oh, we've got the funeral service. You could catch her at that, I suppose. Then, in 1968, there was the Father of Flynn Punch and Judy show, and an incense fire in the vestry. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, and the Muriel Monk story. That was the big one. Yeah. <laughs> Muriel Monks became infatuated with Father O'Flynn and started to make advances towards him. Huh? He, of course, had to reject her, yeah. which so humiliated her that she went round telling people that it was he who'd been making indecent suggestions to her. And what happened? Oh, well, of course, nobody believed her. And she was sent to Coventry. Yeah. The last we heard from her was a postcard with a picture of the cathedral. Oh, thank you, love. I looked through those magazines. Oh, not green beans, have you? Do you good. No, you know I said I'd find those articles on Ada Tansy. Mm -hmm. Well, I found them. There are three of them. Oh, I'm turning into an expert on that program. <laughs> I don't know whether there'll be any help. They're all about her early days on Alexandra Road, things like that. Do you want any sauce? Please. How oh, she modelled the character of Ada Tansy on her cleaner. Thanks. I the taste of these green beans. The woman who cleaned for her. Oh, yes. Yeah. Anyway, you can read them for yourself later. Brethren... We are gathered here today to pray for the soul of Sylvia Helen Spencer. May God have mercy on her and think not only of her trespasses, but also of the happiness she brought to millions in her role of Ada Tansy. Amen. Amen. Amanda Scoville? Uh, yeah? I'm uh, Detective Inspector Naylor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've seen you at the studios. I'd just like a quick word. Um, do, you, do you mind talking out here? No. At least it's quiet, uh, being a cemetery. It's a lovely service, wasn't it? Yes, it was very nice. I almost feel sorry for her husband. Oh, really? Well, it wasn't really his wife that people were mourning for, was it? It was really for somebody called Ada Tansy who had lived down Alexandra Road. Yeah. Did you, uh, did, did you know her well? I mean, Sylvia Spencer. I'm not sure, really. No. Well, when somebody's as well known as that, you always think you know them well, even if you don't, if you see what I mean. Yes, I suppose you're well, right. All the time I've been in the show, people speak to me in the street as though they'd known me all their lives. A man gave me a pound note the other day. Oh? Because I'm playing a squatter. Oh. Oh, sorry for me, I suppose. Hmm. So, so you'd no particular relationship with Sylvia Spencer? Well, not. No. Although I have now, in a way. Oh? Well... They've given me a dressing room. I mean, it's better than the one I had. And I said I didn't mind. I mean, they can't leave it empty forever, can they? No. I feel it's quite an honour, really. Shall we run the credits, then? Show that we mean business. Stand by camera one. All ready to twiddle your knobs in there? Yeah. Right, well, here goes, then. Alexandra Road, episode 3011. There was a church in Chesterfield. Did you read it? At an Ada Tansy memorial service. Oh, very nice. They called a street after in Warrington. Really? Ada Tansy Street. Oh, what a wonderful address. <laughs> morning, Larry. Oh, Good morning. morning. Yes. Cheers. Well, the thing I don't like is still seeing her on the screen. Yes. I mean, we record what, about three weeks ahead? Yeah. So we're going to see her for another two weeks. There's something faintly gruesome about it. I'm beginning to feel like part of the furniture around here. I know the feeling. Here, uh, 
Didn't you see the chief yesterday? Oh, yeah, well. <laughs> You've been keeping your ear to the ground. I'm a detective, Anza. Morning. Good morning, Miss Storfield. Are you still getting in? No, no. Hello. Not now. Morning, love. Oh, morning. You're going to get your glad rags on, then? Yeah, uh, back to squatting for a living. See ya. Very nice. She is. So, then. What? So what did the big white chief have to say for himself, then? Oh, well, he understood the, uh, the peculiar complications of the case. No witnesses to the shooting, no weapon found, but they've already had a week and got precisely nowhere. If we can't do any better, then he's going to put somebody else on it. Well, I had an idea. You know we're always saying we need a story for the Snagsby's. Mike? Hmm? No, sorry. Yes. The Snagsby's. They need a story. Exactly. Yeah. So, how about if Ethel was to win the competition? Oh, no. Oh, shut up, you. Oh, I hate stories that start with people winning competitions. Why? Somebody has to win them. But why is it always our character? Oh, yeah. oh Mike. <laughs> what? Oh, sorry. Oh, he's in a world of his own this morning. Well, can I please have Ethel winning a competition? A no. small competition? A small competition with a tiny prize, yes? Look, <clears throat> you might as well all know now. The show's coming off. No! Alexandra Road? Hey. Coming off? That's all we need. Yeah. I, I can't believe what I'm Look, I'm hearing. sorry... But there it is. No, wh why, Mike? Because we're not getting the ratings anymore. Mm. Sam Richardson told me last week before yeah. Sylvie. And I don't see why I should keep on pretending. You might as well all know. Oh, no, I can't believe it. Well, I wish you'd said earlier. I've just gone and bought a new typewriter. Sorry to bother you again, Miss Carlyle. Not at all. Only we, uh... Well, we're making progress, only not like as quickly as we'd like, if you see what I mean. Anything I can do. Well, if you could tell me about any acts of violence or, or murder, even better, that you've ever had on Alexandra Road. Uh, it's an idea of my inspector, actually, in case, as he puts it, this is an example of life imitating art. Well, we haven't gone in much for violence. No. Still less for murder. You see, the trouble with killing off characters is that although it might give you strong story for three or four episodes, it then leaves you with one less character. I can see that, yeah. So, murders. Now, we have had 11 deaths over the years, usually due to actors or actresses coming to the end of their contracts and wishing to leave the show. We usually kill them, yeah. but always by accident, disease, or, or in one case, criminal neglect on the part of the council. That was when Gloria Tyson fell down an open manhole. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, let me see. We've had three attempted suicides, all failed, uh, seven cases of broken limbs and one severe groin strain. But I suppose they aren't really in the same category. Oh, Nothing, then. The nearest she could remember was in episode 1000 and something or other when Louis, the landlord, was suspected of murdering one of his tenants, dismembering her body and transporting it away in the boot of his car. Oh, really? Turned out it was a shop window dummy that he was taking to his brother Moshe who runs a dress shop in the high street. Oh. Caused quite a stir at the time. It doesn't get us anywhere. No. So, short of something really dramatic happening... Looks like we're up against a brick wall. Come in. What? No! No, please! Morning, Ethel. Hey. Have you heard? Depends what you're talking about. Ada Tams has been knocked down by a train. Mm -hmm. That's right. At least they say as it were a train. Well, Junior! There's been another shooting! Uh, please, no! Oh, 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 oh
Addresses and details of what they're doing here before you let them out. Yes, oh, and if you see a priest, yes, hang on to him. I want him. Yes, sir. Ah. No sign. You've got men searching. We've evacuated the Alexander Road studio. Yes. But not the others. And not the officers. But we're checking everywhere. I've got men going through every floor. Nothing so far, though. No. Well, doctor says we're to wait for the girl to come round. We're on a cord. Don't just try and arouse her, apparently. It would be. Now, let's go and see how she is, then, shall we? Sixth floor. Yes, medical room. Now, state my pension on whoever shot at that girl being a murderer. But never coincidence otherwise. And Grissom, everything, you see. Yeah. I thought I'd seen a ghost a minute ago. What? Well, you know those photos of Ada Tansy that I've been looking at for the past week? Yes. Well, there she was. Well, a double anyway. Headscarf, mittens, everything. Where? Uh, down on the first floor, you know, where the studios are. Oh, no. What? But, can't, can't we get this thing to go down? Hey, don't press that. How do we get it to go down? I want it to go down. Why? Because the woman you saw, a pound to a penny, she's our murderer. Now then, Lope, don't you know this area's been cleared? Hey. Hey, blimey. Hey, come back here, you. That studio, sir. Oh, right. on in. There seems to be some sort of program going on, sir. Hello, Jilly. Hello, Jimmy. Today we're off. Can you guess where? I'll give you a clue. There'll be a fair. Oh, let me guess. I think I know. To the seaside we're going to go. She's over there. Be careful. Yes. To the sea and to the sand. And if... Don't be stupid now. Drop that gun! <laughs> She's going out that door. Through, through there. Jesus. Oh, did you shoot? Did you see it? See it? Nearly got a ghoulish shot off, didn't I? Uh, Jimmy and Julie still transmitting, loves. <laughs> to the sea and, uh, and to the sand, and if we're good, there'll be a band. What you want to do, I'll give you a tip here. Always grease your pans first. Give them a good greasing before you put your mixture in. Watch out! And get pans. You can't have a pan too big, but you can't have it too small. So get a good size and a nice weight. Grease it, as I said. And a good grease so that you covered every inch. Then make sure you put it on your cooker so it's well out of reach of mischievous little hands. Now, back to our mixture. And a last stir, just to see that we've got all the lumps out. Now, see, there's a bullet got into this one. We don't want that, do we? Soon break a tooth on that. Can you see? No. She's in here somewhere, though. What's on, eh? Hey, what the hell do you think you're doing? Oh, right. oh, you're a twelve. What? You're a twelve? All right. Ready when you are. Robert. Yep. Hey. Yes? You do know there's a mad woman with a gun over there, do you? That's why I'm here. Hey, can you get her to fire it? Not yet, but in a minute. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Are ready to kick him out? No, no, no. Let's concentrate on one thing. One, one, two, and five, Robert. Five. Three, two, one. And here in Studio 6, the lights are dimmed and the set's deserted. For somewhere amidst this maze of walls and windows, doors and draining boards, lurks an armed woman looking for her next victim. This is an exclusive live report from Robert Putz for News at 12. Hey, what on the tie? Won't stop us getting shot. There you can see the living rooms and the kitchens familiar to millions, the set of Alexander Road. For this is a studio where, right at this moment, the cast should be recording episode 3011. 
were it not for the sudden reappearance of violence. For it was just one week ago today that Sylvia Spencer, better known as Ada Tansy, the role with which she will always be identified, was gunned down in her own dressing room. And that was a shot. Oh, over there, I think. It is. Definitely a shot, yes, the bullet winging its way somewhere above our heads. Let's see if I'm getting near. Be careful, please. And that shot seemed to come from the living room of Harold and Ethel Snagsby, with its distinctive picture window set and its view of the gasometer. Frank? And one of the policemen, you can perhaps see there, this is not the SAS, just our ordinary Bobby on the street. He's crawling. You can see him there now. He's crawling through the working man's club set, under the tables, past the cellar flap. That's a set that holds a host of memories for Ada Tansy fans. That bar there, over which he's taken part in many a ding-dong argument, but never one quite as violent as this one. Another shot. Frank, all right. Be careful. And there she goes. You probably saw her there, viewers. The first glimpse we've had of the gum woman as she slipped from the Snagsbridge living room into the corner shop. Cedric's corner shop, where she now appears to be hiding behind the counter. David, yeah? You can probably hear the tense exchange between our two police officers. No, I don't think she's got any bullets left. You sure? Yeah, I've been counting. Oh. Slight miscalculation there. Oh, I don't think she's got any now. Be careful. Yeah, I'm going in after that. And the policeman's coming out from under the tables. Yes, he's leaving the bar. And there goes the gun woman. She's out of the shop and into Noreen Johnson's kitchen. And she's cornered. The policeman has her cornered. Just come on now. But she's turned. She's gone through the back door. <laughs> and she's run straight into the back wall of the studio. She was trying to run down Twig Street, not realising that it was no more than a painted back cloth. She's out cold. Robert Putz, News at 12, Agilandra Road. We've got to warn you that anything you say may be taken down and might be used in evidence. Yeah? You... you, you understand? I, I, I think she understands. Yeah. And now then... You are Mrs Jean Tolley, and you live at No. 14, Balaclava Avenue. Do I write that down as yes or no? Um, yes, yes. She didn't talk to have behaved herself like that. None of it would have happened. Pardon? And, and warning. I warned her. She took not a scrap of notice, she didn't. This is Sylvia Spencer you're talking about, is it? <laughs> you used to work for Sylvia Spencer as a cleaner. Didn't you, Mrs. Tolly? <sighs> Mrs. Tolly, did you kill Sylvia Spencer? Did you kill Ada Tunzi? Yes. Thank you. Yes. And I had a right. And I had a duty. On account of wasn't she shaming me with her carryings on? Wasn't it getting where I couldn't show my face in the street for what folks would be saying about me? The carrying on with a, a married man and a bookkeeper who's never seen the inside of a church or, or known an honest day's work in his life? You see, this character, Ada Tansy, had been based on this woman, Jean Tolly, year, years ago. How on earth did you find that out? Yeah, how did you? It was in one of my wife's magazines. Oh. So this Jean Tolly, she'd identified with Ada Tansy, is that the idea? Exactly. More and more as years went on, till she saw the character as some kind of portrayal of herself, as though she were leading a second life on Alexandra Road. A real nut. Well, so when we start telling the story of Ada's affair with Ellis Smith... She saw it as something that was happening to her, personally. Amazing. And apparently, from what we can discover, she's the sort of woman, I mean Jean Tolly now, not Ada Tansy. Yes. She's the sort of woman who thinks of herself as respectable. Church-going, even. Yeah, which I must admit Ada Tansy used to be. The only, I suppose, characters change over the years, sometimes without us really noticing. Well, Jean Tolly noticed. Yeah. And she didn't like it, didn't like it one little bit, because what you were doing, what Sylvia Spencer in particular was doing, was turning this once respectable character that Jean Tolly now saw as herself into a woman of easy virtue. The affair with Ellis Smith in the last straw. Oh, I bet it was. She takes it as a personal insult, reflection on her morals, and she leaves three warnings to Sylvia Spencer that it had got to stop. The only Sylvia he didn't take any notice till it was too late. So Jean Tolly came along, found Sylvia's dressing room, and shot her. With her own gun as well. Was it? Well, her husband says he remembers her having one like it. Apparently it was a present from an American admirer. Little thing it is, go in a woman's handbag. Must have been when Jean Tolly was still a cleaner for Sylvia. Mm. She'd, uh, she'd borrowed it. Why, though? Now, now, this is what I still don't understand. Why did she come back and try and kill Amanda? Ah, Hey, is she all right? Uh, yes, fully recovered, I'm glad to say. Amanda was in Sylvia Spencer's dressing room, yes? Yeah. And from the back, she actually does look not unlike Sylvia Spencer. Not surprising, since they're mother and daughter. Yes. 
In fact, Jean Tolly didn't intend any harm to Amanda Schofield at all. It was Sylvia Spencer, alias Ada Tansy, that she was after, and she didn't notice the difference to the two late. Oh, hang, hang on, hang on. She'd already killed Ada Tansy. Yes. So why try and kill her again? And you a television man. <laughs> <laughs> what? You record three weeks in advance, don't you? Mm. Yes. So even after Sylvia Spencer was dead, Ada Tansy was appearing on the screen, apparently alive and well. Oh, no. Oh, yes. She, she didn't know that they were recording. Well, apparently not. Oh. All that she knew was that for a week after she'd shot at Sylvia Spencer, there was Ada Tansy still living on Alexandra Road. And still carrying on with Ellis Smith. Which was why she had to try again. All right, let's... Start on time for once. Well, this has to be a record. <laughs> First in my time. Oh, I presume you all know about the arrest of that crazy woman and all the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Mm. You know, it, it was my episode that they were supposed to be recording when she was arrested. I hope it's all right. Yes. Yeah. Did you see it on the news? Yeah, live from the Alexander Road studio. Oh, it used to be all live, you know, <laughs> in the early days. Yeah. Uh, morning, Bernard. Oh, morning. Oh, morning. Oh, morning. Oh, morning, Bernard. It's always starting on time, then. I thought you were always <laughs> complaining. Uh, oh. Got a fag, Bernie. Oh, oh yeah. Well, now that we're all present and correct, and before we start, I've got an announcement to make. I bet you can guess, can't you? Oh, oh, Mike. Oh, oh, don't tease, Mike. If you're going to say what I think you're going to say, then say it. The show's staying on. Hooray! Yes, Sam Richardson came to tell me yesterday. Said we can go on for another 3,000. Oh, <laughs> well, top of the ratings, aren't we? Number one for two weeks running. All the publicity, of course. <laughs> and Sylvie and everything. But we had 27 million watching last Monday. Mm, so we want more stories. Hundreds of stories. We're going to go on and on into the 21st century. What a depressing thought. Oh, keeps us off the streets. I'd, uh, I'd been asked to write for the archers, actually. Excuse me, going for a pee. <sighs> well, do you think it'll ever end? Or is this really what people mean when they talk about eternity? <laughs> Very nice, everybody. Lovely. Right, what's left? Final credits. All oh, right, then, let's do them. Music credits. Stand by camera one. Okie dokie. In Who Shot Ada Tansy, David was played by Derek Smith, Frank by John Branwell, and Mike by David Fleishman. Robert Keegan was Arnold, Keith Clifford, Bernard, and Bernard Latham, Larry. Anne Rye played Ruth and Edith, Sue Jenkins, Mel and Denise, and Rosalie Williams, Sylvia and Jean. Kate Lee was Ethel and Barbara, Russell Dixon, Sam and Luigi, and Roger Phillips, Dennis. Other parts were played by members of the cast. Who Shot Ada Tansy was written by Peter Worley and directed in Manchester by Caroline Smith. <laughs>